Hello. Hi, gang. Welcome to the video. I was having some like technical stuff going on where I was like clicking the buttons and the little light thingy wasn't coming up. And I'm like, am I just staring? Am, am I on? Am I on? Is this on? is this thing working? Hello? Hello? So it's working. Uh, welcome to the video. I hope everyone is doing great. Uh, it has been a very productive couple of days. Uh, kind of crazy, but getting used to crazy. I uh, got to read to my granddaughter today. She was semi-conscious at the time, but uh, her mom held her. And it was one of these little books where like they had different textures on things. So she'd take her little hand and like run it across the, the pages. And she smiled a couple of, she smiled at the bird and the bear. So she liked those. And they have like, you know, they had like a little feathered texture for the bird. And they had like a little fur texture for the bear. And it was, it was very cute. So hang on a second. <coughs> I know that's really unprofessional. And I should probably like mute it or go back and edit it or whatever. But since I am barely capable, apparently, of even turning this thing on and being aware that it's recording, sorry. You're just going to get some hacking occasionally. I ain't got the Rona, but um, I do have something that anytime I drink something cold, it just irritates the crap out of my throat and I cough for a while. So I had a swig of water before I started, and that was my mistake. That was my fatal flaw. I am going to tell you a writer's scary story tonight. You know how you have the stories that you tell at campfires to scare the crap out of each other about the guy that has the hook for a hand, the lunatic with a hook for a hand. And uh, this is sort of the publishing version of that. Again, it's a little bit behind the times. Um, this was really hot a week or two ago, but I was uh, busy with baby, <laughs> baby stuff. Um, but I did want to address it because it brings up a lot of interesting points uh, that are things that, that writers, especially folks who want to kind of jump into writing, should probably be at least you know, a little bit aware of. Um, I wish that this never befalls you. I have never exactly had this particular situation befall me, but it is a very good cautionary tale, I think, and just sort of a warning in general. What is this story about? Well, it's about the horrifying <laughs> events that are surrounding Lynn Carter's Flashing Swords number six. So a little inside baseball here. Lynn Carter, um, I hope a lot of you are familiar with the name. Lynn Carter was a huge influence on me uh, as a kid. When I was like in late elementary school, middle school, early high school, hell, I think even through high school, I read a lot of Lynn Carter books. They were paperbacks. If you asked me what most of them are about, I really couldn't tell you other than they were cool. Um, they were usually sword and sorcery books. Uh, lots of guys with swords, uh, lots of evil wizards. Um, as a, I thought, like leading up to this broadcast, I thought he did Quag Keep, which was one of the books I really liked when I was a kid. Uh, but that was actually Andre Norton, who was another person who, there were just these folks, it seems like in the 70s and 80s, who just churned books. They were just old school pros and they just banged out these stories and they were good solid stories. They may have been kind of repetitive, but um, they were just fun books and like something you could read in study hall and be done with it. So I read a lot of Lynn Carter and some Andre Norton. Quag Keep was basically Andre Norton came up with the idea of a group of D and D players who got transported into a fantasy world as their characters and to little 13 14 year old me D, D player that was like the coolest fucking thing ever um one of the characters had a pseudo dragon as a pet and then that suddenly became like a thing in um in D, &D. <laughs> little niche uh history lesson there but but we're talking about lynn carter and lynn carter had this uh series that he had kind of like i guess I would have to do a little more digging probably to, to find out the specifics, but my understanding is Lynn Carter passed away in the late eighties and he had like a, 
like a sword and sorcery anthology that um, he had either been doing or was interested in doing. And this was picked up uh, by a fellow who was uh, kind of in charge of his estate, if I'm getting my story right here. And this fellow's name was Robert Price, Robert M. Price. And in the most recent edition of Lynn Carter's Flashing Swords, number six, um, it was on its way to publication. It was pretty much just about there. Um, when the folks who wrote the stories that made up the anthology, which would be, you know, independent writers, freelance writers, they wrote, um, wrote stories for the, for the anthology. They submitted them. They were accepted. Um, and that's when things started to fall apart. <laughs> Uh, Robert Price wrote an intro. Uh, he was also the, ed you know, the editor for the piece, and he wrote an intro uh, for the anthology. And many people read this uh, intro and were offended by it, including a large number of the writers. Let me see if I can find that for you. Now, there's an article about that. Here we go. Come on, computer. You can do it. Here we go. This is a story from geeknative.com. There's also a story in Bleeding Cool, but I kind of hate Bleeding Cool, so I'm not going to use theirs, even though this story references the story in Bleeding Cool. I used to like Bleeding Cool, and then they got kind of pretentious, and then they got like 8 million freaking like ads that would pop up on your computer. So as slow as my computer is going already, if I had pulled up a Bleeding Cool article, I'm pretty sure it would have just like melted my computer down. So I tend, you know, I, I still read Bleeding Cool from time to time, but it's not exactly my first choice for geek news um, for a bunch of reasons. Um, here we go. Sexist introduction triggers author rebellion over flashing swords number six. This is by Andrew Gid, Gidward? Gidwood. Flashing Swords was a seminal fantasy anthology series that was published from 1973 through 1981. Published by Dell Books, it was edited by Lynn Carter and attracted the interest of most of the important sword and sorcery writers of that time. And there's the cover for the latest one, number six. How pivotal was Flashing Blades? It helped showcase dying earth stories by Jack Vance. I love Jack Vance, oh, so much. Stories of Elric of Melibene by Michael Moorcock and the, Mer and the Merman's Children. Carter died in 1988, as Bleeding Cool reports. More recently, Carter's literary executor, Robert M. Price, sought to revive the series, and Lynn Carter's Flashing Swords number no. 6 was to be published this month. Bleeding Cool co uh, collates the sheer amazement and disappointment of the authors who contributed to the book when Price's forward was revealed in an Amazon preview. If you click on the Amazon preview, which by the way, this is the Amazon US uh, info for the book, you will see that it is uh, out of print. This book is no longer available. Um, it's, I'm going to read you some of the reviews on here too, because they're, they're worth, they're worth the read. Um, but basically you can't get this book, it, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, no, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, um, Robert M. Price wrote an intro to this book that he was editing. Um, and this is basically what the intro says. This is what the intro says. Okay, YouTube, this isn't me. This is what this guy said. Sports and games must, not, must no longer be based on competition, lest someone feel dejected because of his mediocrity. Poor little flowers. This, in case you hadn't noticed, is no way to prepare young men or women, or women, exclamation point, for adult life and a free market economy and in a world full of powerful national enemies. The continuous false rape accusations serve the same end, seeking to make masculinity, even the natural male interest in women, into a, quote, rape culture. Of course, such wolf crying works against women because soon it will become habitual to dismiss every rape accusation as the shrill line of yet another Lena Dunham. Am I thus suggesting we ease up on rapists? No, you don't want to know what I think ought to be done with those bastards. 
Nor is it only the self-defeating futility of crying wolf. There are more at work here. There's more at work here. It smacks of an ideology of man-hating. I have been long puzzled by the feminist hatred of pornography. It reduces women to sex objects. Basically, it goes on and on and on about this. And this is, this is something that if he had handed this to anyone else, and said, what do you think of this as the intro to my sword and sorcery anthology? They would have gone, this is like a political editorial, and this is, is not really the platform for you to, to present this. Um, now, look, I'll, that I, I believe every person has a right to their opinion, no matter how ridiculous or, to be quite honest, obscene it is. I am a full-on 100% give me everything, give me all the information, and then I'll make my own judgments on it. And my own judgment on this is, this guy lost his freaking mind and, and, and just wrote whatever the hell he wanted and slapped it in the introduction. Now, sword and sorcery is a, is a genre that is, is very kind of macho. It's a very masculine, uh, traditionally masculine sort of driven uh, genre of writing. And, um, sometimes it's done very well. There are also a lot of folks I know um, personally and, and know through just their reputation that are working to expand uh, the definitions of sword and sorcery and to expand them for uh, women and people of color. And I think that's really cool. I've actually heard some, about some interesting projects that uh, I'll see if I can get you some links to them that I think do do service to uh, the history of uh, Robert E. Howard and, and, and folks like that. Um, Fritz Lieber, um, I, oh God, I love Fritz Lieber. Look, the Fafford and the Grey Mouser books are so freaking cool. Um, anyways, this is, <laughs> so this is just crazy talk. This is, I took my crazy pills today. Um, so the article continues. Now publisher Paul Puro Press has decided to, do, by the way, not trying to edit this guy's stuff. It's just, it's blathering. It's just, he's going on and on and on. He's talking about lesbians and he's talking about progressives and gender neutral language and just crazy. <laughs> like clouds of mosquito poison pumped out of trucks coming down the street. I, okay. If you want to read all of this, find the article. I'll cite it in the section under um, the info about the video. So you'll have a link to this article. And like I said, it's by Geek Native. I, I'm not going to waste the time on all of this. I, it, it, I'm sure that, and this is just a sample of it. I'm sure there was more than this in there. But this was enough. Uh, now publisher Pulpiro Press has decided to delist the book Bob McLean, uh, McLean of Pulp Hero Press told Bleeding Cool. Uh, and there's a quote from Bob McLean. When Bob Price sent me the manuscript, I assumed he had shared his introduction with the authors, given the controversial content. I don't agree with much of anything in that introduction, but I also don't like to censor other viewpoints. Well, good on you, Bob. Uh, so on the assumption that all the authors were on board, I published the book. The problem, of course, is that the authors didn't know what Bob had written in the introduction. Surprise! And of course, they didn't want to be seen as implicitly accepting or endorsing Bob's opinions by having their work appear in these books, in this book. I read Flashing Swords as a kid in the 1970s, and it's a shame that the brand has taken such a hit so soon after its reappearance. I'm speaking with most of the contributors about including their stories in a new anthology series. No politics, no drama, just sword and sorcery. And I'd like to release that later this year. It's reported that author Charles R. Rutledge had asked for their contribution to Flashing Swords 6 to be removed. Before Paul Piero Press delisted the book, author Cliff Biggers, early to raise the alarm, urged people to cancel their purchase and, and offered personal refunds if that was not possible. And here's the twit. <laughs> Is this a twit? No, this is a Facebook thing. It's not a twit uh, from Cliff Biggers. I know it's a tweet. I just, I like using twit. 
Um, it has come to my attention, this is from Cliff Biggers, that the, in the introduction to the book Flashing Swords Number 6, editor Robert M. Price has made several statements that I cannot and do not agree with. I have requested that my name and story be removed from the anthology, and I cannot recommend that anyone buy the book. I'll make sure that my story, God Killer, is available in another form at a later date. I apologize to anyone who may have already purchased the book at my earlier recommendation. And he goes on, but you get the gist of that. There's several other authors here. There's Frank Schindler, uh, Paul McNamee, Paul McNamee. Um, all these authors had contributed to the anthology. This is the article again. In a final twist, it looks as if the book was on sale for between a day and a half, to, for between a day and a half a day before the publisher pulled it, and some copies are in the wild. Uh, Paul McName uh, asserts that Robert M. Price has copyrighted the book under his name, but has no rights to the stories. Um, and this is another tweet from him. It become and because it unfortunately needs to be said, Lynn Carter's Flashing Swords number six was available for order for about 12 to 24 hours, near as I can estimate. Some copies are out there. Robert M. Price copyrighted the entire book under his name and not those of the individual authors. Let's see. We sign nothing and he owns nothing. If anyone tries the, you had a verbal agreement and email argument, that is bullshit. The initial agreement is not the contract. Yes, you can have my story is not the de delineation of publishing terms in regards to compensation, rights, rights revision, etc. This was not the first, this was not the first radio clown radio maybe for any of us. I never have put a story in print without the contract. Price has no claim to publish our stories or to block their use else anywhere else we arrange. Presumably the book is now out of print, but this has left a bad taste in our mouths. We are moving on now. In my case, one little story and a niche book sure ain't worth the brouhaha, but there's a, but there you go. Um, as pretty much there. So basically what this, uh, what this clown did here, Mr. Price, if that is your real name, basically took in a bunch of stories from professional writers, freelance writers, um, put them in print without contracts and, uh, and copyrighted all the material um, basically without, uh, without any contracts. He stole these people's stories and claimed them as his own legally. Something I wanted to show you, let me see, I think I have it right here. Let's see if I can pull this up real quick. I just finished a short story called Shiva for my Patreon uh, patrons. And uh, I'm going to be doing a piece of original fiction every month for them. And I've already started on the next month, but this is Shiva. And I was doing some revisions and edits on it today. Um, right up here at the top, I have copyright Rod Belcher 2020, all rights reserved. When you finish a piece or when you start a piece, stick this up here. It may seem silly, but this is what you're saying is I own this. You can publish it, publisher. You can print it, publisher. Um, you can put it up a uh, website, but I own it. It's mine. And you got to give me some kind of an agreement, uh, and compensation if you intend to use it. So this is in a lot of ways, a, a scary story for, for writers. It, imagine your excitement. It's your first time you've written something, you send it out into the wild, you get, uh, a message. I got actually I had this happen to me a couple times when I was starting out. I had a couple times where I had short stories that I would send out and they'd be like, hey, this is going to be in this anthology. And I'd be, oh, that's great. And then six months later, I get an email saying, hey, authors, we're really sorry. But uh, this was pre crowdfunding. This was in the days before crowdfunding. And they were just like, we, we can't, we can't make it work. We don't have the money. And sorry. So we're releasing your stories. You know, go back into the wild and live free and go find somewhere else for them to, to live. Um, but yeah, imagine you do this. You, you bust your brains out to finish a story. You edit it. You tighten it up. You send it out and you get that wonderful acceptance. And then some freaking ass clown like Robert M. Price basically hijacks your story. I mean, there's several different things in this whole little cautionary tale that are important. Um, 
you have a right as a writer to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big person. You sign that contract, you know, and, and you're in, however, you sign the contract and then you find out that the guy who is editing your, your work and is putting the intro in is a stark raving nut job. And you don't agree with any of what he's saying, or even if you agree with some of it and not other parts of it, if it just is coming off as totally unprofessional, which that introduction is totally unprofessional. Um, you have a right. That's your story. All rights reserved. It's yours. And you can get out of the contract. Um, some places it's easier to get out of than others. This is another place where having an agent is very helpful because you can have your agent do battle for you and basically go in and say, no, 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 no. You're, you know, you, we got an agreement and, and you're breaking your end of the agreement with, with this crazy stuff. So we want out and uh, you're not, you're never trapped. Um, so I want that, that part is, is kind of heartbreaking to me because I mean, I don't know how many people in this were like our pros. It sounds like several more pros, but maybe some of them were like, first time writers, and this is your first experience with being published, and it's a freaking nightmare. Um, I wanted to read a few of the, of the thing. It got, oh, rating wise here, check this out. Let's see, where's the ratings at? Um, the customer reviews, let's see, 16 ratings. Let's see, 9% were five star. 91% was one star. I'm betting that's probably um, the, the guy here. Um, um, what's his name? Oh, hell, where'd he go? Um, shit, where's his name? Hang on, sorry. Uh, Robert M. Price. I'm betting Robert M. Price slapped that five-star review on there. First freaking thing. Uh, let's look at the five-star reviews for just a second, shall we? Let's, let's, let's. Let's look a little deeper, shall we? Can you even get to it? Is it still there? <laughs> my computer, oh, my computer is going slow. I'm sorry, guys. We may just have to, oh, come on. There we go. All right, sorry about that. I have been pushing my poor little computer kind of to its limit. So it is taking a little time. Here we go. <laughs> this is from El Gasanto. Five-star review. <clears throat> Again, YouTube, not me. Someone else's words. I would never dare to assume that I myself was El Gasanto. I'm just reading El Gasanto's words. Five stars. Nice to know that fantasy has not completely bowed down to the PC tyrants. Oh, boy. I have bought very little fantasy or science fiction over the past few years. But after someone showed me the forward to this, I decided to order it, even if it is overpriced. <laughs> A breath of fresh air to see someone who knows what fantasy is about doing. Knows what fantasy is about doing something. Well said, El Gasanto. I certainly hope you enjoy your one copy of the book, which may never, ever show up. Or if you do get a hold of it, man, you've, you're holding a little piece of uh, science fiction fantasy history there. So hang on to it in like 10 years, 20 years, you can probably sell it, maybe. I don't know. Um, so here we go. These are the one-star reviews. Unauthorized publication. Cliff Biggers this is one of the writers in the book. Uh, please note that this book was published without contracts to use the work of any of the authors. Several of the authors, myself included, have requested that our stories be removed because we object to the contents of the wholly inappropriate and offensive introduction. We are working to find a new home for these stories. Repugnant Forward. This is TDC, one star. I ordered because I'm a huge fan of Lynn Carter and his legacy. I canceled after being made aware of the Repugnant Forward. There is no place for that garbage. Um, IRC, one star. This is, oh, uh, read the forward. Misogyny has no place in literature now. This is disgusting. Price is over the hill. Uh, Price is an over the hill woman hater. Plus $27 for this? No way. Come for the misogyny and stay for the overprice. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so... Uh, John D. Harvey, editor's preface is a far-right screed. 
uh, Gary McCluskey. Hopefully the authors will get their stories into other books. Uh, Darth Video. I like the name. One star. The forward negates the, forward negates the book. Um, <laughs> Anton Wyrick. One star. Do anthologies need forwards? I think this one in particular answers that question very well for you. Sad to see flashing swords go off the rails. Hopefully we'll see the, the antho republished without any forward at all. We are here to read stories, not rando political screeds. So Amazon customer, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up with this one. Just wow. Not worth it with a forward that is in, an insane rant that has nothing to do with the stories. I feel bad for the authors. So, um, and there's actually, there's some other folks here who are talking about how it was repugnant and misleading and manipulative and they are all right. They are all correct in that. So it is kind of sad because like I said, I have very fond mem memories of Lynn Carter. It, it, you know how you associate certain things with your, with your childhood and maybe if you're like a fan or, or into science fiction fantasy, there are just certain things where they're like little touchstones for you. And Lynn Carter is one of those. I, you know, I read a lot of science fiction. It, 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 I mean, even if it, like particular stories didn't like grab me and hit me. I'm not saying that everything Lynn Carter wrote was like awesome. I'm, I'm just saying that it was, it was almost like comfort food. It was, it was something that I could sit down in study hall and, and read and finish. And I enjoyed it. And it, it expanded my, my geekdom a little bit. It made my, made my life a little nicer. And it's really sad that his name is now attached to this. And it's really sad that this guy, Price, thought he could get away with this. I mean, he obviously sounds like someone who does not have a lot of um, empathy or care for, for others. Um, he sounds like someone who's very bitter. And, um, and that's sad. You know, it, when you take in, you know, editors come a sacred thing. We're going to have some more videos about editing and, you know, you have to trust your editor, even sometimes when it's hard to do. And so it's a two way street, you know, you're trusting your editor, um, to, to take good care of your baby. You're sending them your words and your thoughts and your ideas, your imagination. And that's a kind of a sacred trust. And I have worked with some wonderful editors. I've worked with some of the best editors in my opinion that, that there are. And um, it's just really unfortunate that, uh, that this guy isn't one of them. So that all being said, um, I'd like your thoughts on all of this, what you think. Um, I'll try to get you some links to some of the kind of the alternative sword and sorcery stuff that I've seen that looked pretty cool. Um, I mean, look, the guy has, I, I do believe, even if, if it's crazy talk, or even if I don't agree with it, I do believe he has a right to his opinion and to voice it and to have it out there, but not at the expense of all these writers who don't agree with him. And it, it's just, I've never seen that done in any anthology I've ever worked in. Um, and I've worked with some really great people with some really great anthologies, and I've never seen anything like that. And then there's, there's the, simply the legal standpoint of he stole these people's words and ideas and thoughts and creations stole them and, and tried to claim them as his, own, as his own to make a little money probably before he knew his thing was going to get shut down. And that's reprehensible. And he sounds like an ass. But, you know, there's a lot of them out there. So the moral of the story is, kids, the moral of the story is copyright right here. Copyright. You, oh, I think, actually, I think I clicked on it without actually going to try to Moral of the story is, here we go. Copyright Rod Belcher, 2020, all rights reserved. Just put that on all of your writing. No, no. <laughs> Just put somewhere that this is a copyrighted piece of work and that you reserve all the rights. You reserve all the rights. It's your baby. It's your thing. I think I clicked on the tab for the actual document so i was probably just sitting here talking to you i don't know what's going to gonna look like on the video but basically i'm glad i caught that so basically that's the moral of the story make sure and fight for your rights don't ever let someone steal something of yours 
You worked hard for it. You bled for that. It came out of here. It came out of your skull. And there's nobody in the world who could make that except you. So you fight for your baby. Fight for your children. Don't, don't let them get dragged away, especially by the likes of some scumbag like this guy. So that being said, tomorrow uh, I will be doing a giveaway on Patreon. I'm going to do a random uh, drawing for someone to win an ebook of The Ghost Dance Judgment which is part four in my Golgotha series uh, coming out from Falstaff Publishing. Um, I am hoping that tomorrow I will be revealing something to you, um, a very big surprise that I am very excited to, to share with you guys. Um, if you're interested in trying to get the ebook, um, head over to my Patreon page. I'll have the link uh, in the description under the video. Um, see if you are interested in uh, joining my Patreon. At any level, you're in the running to uh, get that book. So try to do that tonight or tomorrow early uh, because uh, Wednesday, uh, I'm going to probably wait till Wednesday evening. I will be doing the selection to see who wins the ebook. Um, also, we still have the contest going with the Queen's Road. Oh, I, went, I just got these. I picked these up. Thanks, John Hartness. I went to the P.O. Box. And there was the Queen's Road. This is the uh, trade paperback. I haven't seen the hardcovers yet, but we have a contest going for a few more weeks. Um, buy the audio version of the Queen's Road, which is from Audible Books, Audible um, Audiobooks. It's an Audible original. Buy the Queen's Road uh, audiobook, and you are in the running for a copy, a hardcover copy of the Queen's Road. Uh, signed by me. And we're going to do that drawing for that at the end of August, August 31st. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else really uh, pressing that I wanted to tell you. I think that's it. Um, I am going to uh, let the folks on Patreon uh, read my short story, Shiva, and they get it for the month. And then next month, I will have a new piece of fiction for them. And Shiva will head out into the universe. I'm going to try to sell it. And I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop on how that goes. Still working on my novel, uh, making progress. Hopefully have it done in the next uh, month or so. I say that every time. I just stopped putting actual names to the months. It's just gonna be in a month or so. So we'll just keep, keep going, keep on keeping on. But thank you guys for uh, checking in. Um, I'd like to hear what you think of this whole, uh, this whole sorry story. Um, and uh, if you have favorite sword and sorcery stuff, um, and maybe maybe sword and sorcery stuff that's kind of a little more contemporary, I would love to uh, hear about it. Put all that in the comments below. Share the video if you think it's something worth sharing, because that helps me out a lot. Um, I'm in my never-ending quest to try to get to uh, 1,000 plus subscribers. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next video. I hope everyone's having a great time today, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.